Huggins here. Welcome to The Good Life. And we are in a new series that I call the In Christ Devotions. In Christ Devotions. They're great. This is episode number three. Father, thank you so much for everyone who's joining with me today. And I pray your blessing on each and every one. In the name of the Lord. Amen. All right. You know, I say this over and over, but I say it because it's true and it's something I want you to know about me so that you'll be able to uh, kind of track with me in my teaching what I'm sharing with you. I am an in Christ preacher. What's an in Christ preacher? Well, you can say it in different ways. In him, in Christ, new creation realities. It's, uh, it's the teaching that focuses upon the message that God gave Paul by direct revelation. Christ in you, the hope of glory. <clears throat> and you can flip that around. You in Christ, you and I are in him. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creature, right? A new creation. And uh, we've talked about that in this devotion. And today we're going to talk about believing in Christ. So let's look at our scriptures. <clears throat> Basically, one scripture is some supporting text. John eleven twenty five. 25. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He who believes in me. I'm going to say something to you that you're going to have to think about, but believing in Jesus is not enough. You see, that, that uh, word there, this is, this is the prepositional phrase we're looking for, in me, in Jesus, in Christ. He, believe, he believes in he who believes in me will be saved. Praise God. Even though he's dead, he will live in me. But wait a second. It's really the word in two. And if you go into the Greek and look it up, you'll see that I'm right. There are two prepositions that are translated in or into or unto. And one is the Greek letter en, and the other is the Greek letter eis. N R Ice, and this is that word into he who he who believeth into me, though he were dead, yet he will live. That changes it into Christ. You see, believing is not enough. Muslims believe in Jesus, the prophet. They believe in Jesus. They won't argue with with you if you tell them that he's a the prophet. They'll say, yeah, they believe it. Or if you say, I, I believe in Jesus, they say, I believe in Jesus too. Uh, I've had that conversation with uh, with people. Uh, I believe in Jesus too. He was a great prophet. If you put him on the spot and say, was he the Lamb of God sent to save the world? Uh, they would say no, but he was a prophet sent from God. Not a savior, but a prophet. <clears throat> okay, that's not enough. Just to believe that there was a prophet named Jesus. And then uh, uh, historians believe in Jesus. They believe in the historical Jesus. There are too many proofs that there was a Jesus. He left his teachings. People wrote about him. Josephus wrote about him. So uh, a good historian will admit, yes, there was a Jesus, right? We changed our calendars before, because of Jesus. Uh, B.C. and A.D., before Christ and, and after his birth or after his death, praise God, uh, A.D., and an, I think it's after his birth. Anyway, yeah, historians believe in Jesus. And devils believe in Jesus. <laughs> uh, James 2.19 said, You believe that there is one God, you do well. The devils believe and tremble. Devils believe in Jesus. Uh, they believe in Jesus more than some uh, so-called Christians believe in Jesus because they believe in the authority of Jesus, his ability to cast them out. Uh, in his uh, ultimate uh, reign, in his in his kingship, yeah, they, they they do believe in Jesus, but they're not saved. Believing in Jesus doesn't save uh, devils. Uh, the uh, the uh, C E B, the Common English Bible says, "Ha! Even the demons believe this, and they tremble with fear." Ha! You believe in in God. A lot of people believe in Jesus, like he's 
historically uh, was a person. But it's one thing to believe in something. It's another to believe into something. Let me give you a scripture, uh, Romans 10, 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. There's that Greek word, ice, into righteousness, into a right relationship with God. And with the mouth confession is made into, there's that word again, or unto ice salvation, which uh, uh, that word into means to go into a definite state or place to, to, go, to go into something, like you go into a house. Now let me, I'll use an illustration. Do you believe in the White House? Do you believe in the White House? The seat of the executive part of the government is in the White House. Right, that's where the president lives. That's where the business of the White House, a lot of the business is taken care of uh, from day to day. Do you believe in the White House? Do you believe that there is a White House in Washington, D.C. on number 16 Pennsylvania Avenue? Do you believe in it? But have you believed into it? Uh, I've been in the White House. Yeah, Jesus said, I'm the door, and by me, you'll enter in. And uh, I went through a door to get into the White House. I didn't just drive by and say, yeah, there's the White House. That confirms it. I went into it. I went into it. I had the confidence to go in through the door into the White House. You see, there's a difference between believing in the existence of something and being in that place in that state of being, in that relationship. So with the heart, man believes into righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto or into salvation. Jesus is the Savior. I can say it this way. With the mouth, confession is made into Jesus. With the mouth, confession is made into a relationship with God. With the mouth, confession is made into a state of being we call salvation of, of safety and prosperity and health. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, John 15, 7. If you abide, that means continue to be present. <laughs> not if you visit, but if you abide in me. Not just... Not just uh, meet with me every now and then. But if you if you buy, abide, if you live in me, if you dwell in me, if you abide in me, that means to be continuously present. And my words abide in you. You can ask what you will and it shall be done. Now, I'm a word of faith guy and I believe in the Bible. I believe in making confession. I believe in the promises of God. And I've, I've recognized that some of, some of the my friends and colleagues who've been exposed to the best faith teaching on the planet by the best faith teachers on the planet have a difficult time getting their prayers answered. In fact, some of them have a, a terrible track record of getting their prayers answered. And you would think with all of the seminars and all of the teaching and memorizing of the scripture and listening to, you know, the audio files over and over and watching the videos over and over and reading the books over and over and uh, quoting the word over and over, <clears throat> you would think that they would have better results. But you see, there, uh, there are two conditions that we have to meet here. And the number one condition is abiding in the Lord. Let me read it to you again. If you abide in me, if you live, if you make your permanent dwelling place inside of me in a fixed position in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done. You see, uh, to use the word apart from relationship with Jesus is a Kind of like Gnosticism. I would call it Gnosticism. It's head knowledge. It's intellect. You know, just quoting the word over and over. No, we have to enter into a relationship with Jesus and live in Him and walk in Him and dwell in Him and be in Him. Praise God. <clears throat> One last scripture, Mark 16, 16. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Does that mean that being baptized saves you? Uh, let me explain it a little further. The word baptized means to be immersed, to, to be put uh, under, to be submerged. You know, you take a body of water like the Jordan River and you go into it and you go under the water. They don't just splash some water on you. You're immersed. And he who's immersed 
in Christ is saved. He who is immersed in the sea of living water is saved. He who has entered into Christ is saved. It's not enough just to have mental assent and say, yeah, I believe in, in Jesus. Yeah, I, I don't argue the fact. There's, I'm sure there was a Jesus. I mean, history says it. The Muslims say it. Yeah, there's a Jesus. That's not enough. You have to believe into. How do you believe into? With the heart, man believes into righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made into salvation. There you have it. One of the fundamental in him scriptures that every Christian needs to know. Praise God. Yeah, we're in Christ. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. There, I have the, the largest curated list of in him scriptures that I've ever encountered. I put them together over a period of many years. Uh, I find more from time to time. It's, it's like finding a buried treasure because sometimes uh, uh, they're difficult to spot. Uh, I've found two in the last two weeks after 40, gosh, I don't know, maybe 46 years of uh, searching out these NM scriptures. I found two new ones. I mean, I've been actively searching and I've got the largest curated list of in him scriptures of anyone I know. Now, there may be someone out there that has a bigger list, but uh, I don't know who they are. I haven't seen that list. In fact, I've probably, probably got the biggest list of anybody. I don't know. I like to think I do. Maybe I don't. But Jesus has the biggest list, right, in the Word. But uh, I am, my wife and I are going to put together, we are putting together right now, a book called In Christ Devotions where we're going to take a different in him scripture every day. I'll do one day, she'll do the next, and we'll swap and uh, give a little commentary on that scripture. And then the other person uh, will give a little comment on the commentary so that, or an annotation. So we'll both actually be saying something about a scripture every day. And that's going to be good. It's, it's going to be called the In Christ. No, it's going to be called Every Day in Christ. That's a good title, isn't it? It'll be a devotion. And uh, that's in the works. And uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to print uh, a copy of the RSV Bible with all the in him scriptures marked and maybe a little comment in the, in the margin. And uh, I'll do that probably before the year is out. It's, uh, it's actually not that difficult because I have the list. So uh, I'll do that. I'll do a in him Bible and I'll make that available. And uh, then everybody will have the same information that I have, and it'll bless you. All right, listen, what you ought to do is come be with us in Z Church because we're an in Christ church, new creation realities. We believe it, we teach it, we celebrate it, we live it, and uh, we want you to benefit from it. If you can't be with us online on the Z Church platform, you can be with us on Facebook Live or YouTube Live or Twitch Live, but go to zchurch.life, a lot of information. Uh, you're one click away from being uh, in the Z Church service, 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific time, Saturday mornings. We don't have church on Sunday. There's not a religious reason for that. <laughs> Just it's practical and the Holy Spirit uh, led me to do that, to start having church on Saturday. We do that so you can be a part of it. And uh, it's at 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific time. So you'll have to figure out which time zone you're in. And while you're at zchurch.life, pull down the giving tab and, and become a partner. Participate with us and, and plant seeds into this ministry. You'll receive a harvest of blessings. In Jesus' name, I have one last thing to say to you, and that is always keep it simple, sweetheart. Because sometimes the most beautiful things can be.